4,000 years ago, the demon lord, Dongfeng Kingkang, broke the Tianju seal of the demon world. He destroyed thousands of stars and hundreds of constellations. He entered three realms and caused chaos in terms of the sun and the moon. In order to protect the peace of the world, the god of war took the Shufeng sword to fight against the demon lord Dongfeng. Dongfeng summoned a red dragon to attack the war god. The war god sacrificed her life to seal him. The three realms have been peaceful for 10,000 years thanks to her. Hua Lin is a disciple of god Tai Meng, and after a period of cultivation, she took on a human form. But she is immediately punished by the heavenly emperor because she has repeatedly violated the laws of heaven. Suddenly, there is a strong earthquake happening in the demon world. It turns out that a group of demons is trying to break the seal to release demon lord Dongfeng. They sacrifice their lives to break the seal and free the demon lord. Demon Lord Dongfeng immediately wants revenge on the heavens, even though his power has not yet fully recovered. The generals of heaven immediately prevent Dongfeng from entering, but Dongfeng is too strong. He has killed the Tianmen Beast and the Eight Kings of Spirit Platform. The current god of war, Zhu Yuan, is immediately present to stop Dongfeng. He summons god Chengxing, who holds the magic axe, to stop Dongfeng, but to no avail. Dongfeng risks his life to use forbidden magic to fight Zhu Yuan. However, because Dongfeng's strength has not fully recovered, he has been defeated by god Zhu Yuan. He accidentally falls at Hua Lin's place. Taking this opportunity, he swaps his soul with hers in order to escape the pursuit of god Zhu Yuan. When Zhu Yuan comes, he sees the demon lord unconscious. Hua Lin reports the situation to god Zhu Yuan, saying that the demon lord is exhausted. Of course, Hua Lin's body has now swapped places with the demon lord's soul. Zhu Yuan immediately summons God Hui, who once destroyed the sun, to end the demon lord's life. However, Hua Lin immediately blocks Zhu Yuan's summoning. She says that destroying the demon lord's body at this time would not be able to stop the demonic power from being released from his body. She suggests temporarily locking the demon lord in the god tower, and then finding a suitable way to kill him. She volunteers to guard the demon lord inside the god tower. God Zhu Yuan immediately agrees and follows Hua Lin's suggestion. He locks the demon lord in the god tower and lets Hua Lin guard him. Hua Lin wakes up to find her soul inside Dongfeng's body, causing her to panic. She cries and asks Dongfeng to return her body. Dongfeng also wants to get his body back, but first they need to get out of this place. However, because the demon lord's soul is in Hua Lin's body, his magic power is now weak and cannot destroy the barrier of the god tower. He needs someone's help. The god tower is a place dedicated to holding powerful demons and evil gods, so there will certainly be other prisoners here. He goes to seek the help of a prisoner who is a degenerate deity. Dongfeng says that in order to destroy the barrier, they need to destroy the stone above the tower. But the degenerate deity says that the stone could not be destroyed because whoever is imprisoned in this tower has their power sealed. But Dongfeng says he can destroy that stone. He asks the degenerate deity to dig a small hole just below the stone's shadow. Thanks to that hole, Dongfeng is able to summon Dark Flame, a monster created from part of Dongfeng's former power. He orders Dark Flame to break the stone, causing the tower's barrier to be destroyed and the god tower to collapse. Dongfeng thanks the degenerate deity, Chilin, causing Chilin to panic because he recognizes the girl in front of him as Demon Lord Dongfeng. He immediately runs away. Dongfeng then wants to swap his body back, but Hua Lin fears that she will be killed as soon as Dongfeng gets the body back. She decides not to switch anymore and goes away. Dongfeng is angry and wants to force her to give the body back to him. However, Hua Lin panics and accidentally punches him in the face, causing him to faint. Since she is in the demon lord's body, she is possessing his power. Hua Lin panics because she killed her own body. God Wu comes because he hears the noise of the tower, but he doesn't realize Hua Lin is inside the demon lord's body. He immediately summons Thunder to attack her. Fortunately, she is unharmed thanks to this powerful body, but her real body has been burned by Wook's attack. God Wook continues to attack her, forcing her to flee without explaining to him. She runs to the human world and brings her charred body. The Dark Flame also goes with her. He says he won't harm her because she is using his master's body. The Dark Flame says that her true body is dead, and the Demon Lord's soul has also gone to the underworld where the souls of the dead will gather after they die. Hua Lin wants to repair her body, so she decides to go to the underworld to look for Dongfeng. The Dark Flame instructs Hua Lin to open the portal to the underworld. As soon as she enters the gate, she encounters three gatekeepers. The guy with four hands continuously attacks her, but can't hurt her. However, Hua Lin couldn't beat him because she doesn't know how to use the Demon Lord's skills. The Dark Flame feels that she is too useless, so he enters her body to use Dongfeng's body. 
He used to be part of Dong Feng's body, so he also knows a little about some of Dong Feng's spells. He immediately summons a lot of paws that trample the four-armed guy. The other two gatekeepers start to attack him, but their speed can't be as fast as his. They decide to attack him with a combo attack. The girl will block his view while the boy attacks him. However, they are unable to penetrate his stone coffin and are counterattacked by their own attack. The Dark Flame feels that they are quite strong and asks them to choose between dying or becoming his servants. They agree to become his servants and declare their identities. This boy's name is Hoa Lei, and this girl's name is Da Han Sa. The Dark Flame leaves Dong Fang's body and continues with Hua Lin to the center of the underworld. When they step inside, they see the spirits here kneeling before Dong Fang. Despite being in the form of a soul, Dong Fang is still too strong. When Dong Feng sees Hua Lin, he immediately forces her to leave his body. However, she is determined not to leave if Dong Feng doesn't fix her real body. After a moment of struggle, both Hua Lin and Dong Feng enter the Demon Lord's body at the same time, making the Demon Lord's body temporarily inactive. The King of the Underworld takes the Demon Lord to a resting room and orders Hua Lin's body to be burned because it looks disgusting. Taking this opportunity, the king also quietly informed the heavenly world to ask for their help. Hua Lin then awakens, but she can only control half of this body. It turns out that she and Dongfeng have entered the same body, so now they are sharing this body. Hua Lin asks him to fix her original body, but Dongfeng tells her that her original body was burned. She gets angry and says she will stay in this body forever and make him act shamefully. With no other choice, Dongfeng has to help her find a new body. Dongfeng calls the king and asks him to bring the destiny book. After a night of searching, Dongfeng found out the identity of a girl named Zai Wonking, who is on the verge of death, and whose birthday matches Hua Lin's. Hua Lin can use that girl's body as a new one. Dongfeng immediately wants to leave the underworld, but the king gathers the evil soldiers to stop him. Dongfeng begins to summon a series of magical beasts. Ribbon snake, tiger fish, horned sheep, fire sheep, flying mouse, huge, water horse. All evil soldiers are quickly annihilated. Dongfeng approaches the king and threatens him a bit then leaves. Dongfeng returns to the demon world to rest a bit. The one who greets him is General Shang Kue. Dongfeng orders Shang Kue to find a girl named Zai Wanking in the human world. Having said that, Dongfeng immediately goes to take a bath because he hasn't bathed in 4,000 years. However, since Dongfeng and Hua Lin are in the same body, she can see that part of him. She plans to gouge out her eyes herself, but Dongfeng says he will help her erase the memory. After bathing, Dongfeng goes to the human world in search of a sword. He goes to an ancient mountain in the northernmost region and enters a cave. Inside is a high-level seal of heaven. It turns out that this place is the tomb of the god of war who sealed Dongfeng 4,000 years ago. Dongfeng comes here to steal her Shufeng sword. He then destroys the place and continues to the demon market at Mount Kunlun to find a scabbard for his sword. There are a lot of demons here, and they are mainly engaged in commercial business. Dongfeng goes to a tea house to rest, but the hostess constantly wants to seduce him. He asks the hostess about a weapon shop in this place. She says that he must go through the woods behind the market and go under the ice lake to meet the lord of this place. The lord will take him to the weaponsmith. Dongfeng wants to leave immediately, but the hostess keeps begging him to drink this tea. Dongfeng found out that the tea was drugged, so he planned to kill her, but Hua Lin stops him and drinks the tea. After drinking that cup of tea, Hua Lin constantly feels hot and excited. A demon appears and wants to seduce Dongfeng, but is immediately bound by him. It turns out that the hostess and her daughter regularly trapped other demons in order to absorb their power. The hostess shows up and attacks Dongfeng, but he summons Hoa Lei to beat her. She begs him to spare her life and volunteers to deliver the antidote. Dongfeng checks it and feels it is real, so he lets Hua Lin use it. He then intends to kill them, but the lord of this place appears and stops him. The lord says he will punish them and asks Dongfeng to let it go. In return, he will direct Dongfeng to the swordsmithing place. Dongfeng agrees to spare their lives, but he has to take part of their bodies to use as raw materials for swordsmithing. The Lord orders a guiding spirit to guide Dongfeng to the crystal city under the ice lake. He immediately goes to the workshop to look for a blacksmith. Accidentally, he sees Lord Chengxing, who once fought him in the heavenly realm. Chengxing came to this place to repair his axe, but the time to repair it is 1000 years because he doesn't have special materials to shorten the repair time. His mother is being sealed at Mount Hua. Without that axe, he can't save his mother. Dongfeng takes out the Shufeng sword and the 3000-year-old snake scales. He asks the blacksmith to make a scabbard for his sword. 
Cheng Seng is attracted by Dongfeng's 3,000-year-old snake scale because it is the necessary material that can help his axe be repaired in two hours. However, Dongfeng doesn't want to help Cheng Seng because Cheng Seng is a general of the heavens. But Hua Lin threatens Dongfeng, saying that if he doesn't help Cheng Seng, she will cry right here to embarrass him. Dongfeng immediately agrees with her and shares part of the materials with Cheng Seng. Cheng Seng feels very surprised and touched. He says thanks to him. The first time Dongfeng hears a word of thanks from someone, it makes him blush. After Dongfeng walks out of the workshop, Cheng Seng follows behind him and gives him a letter. Because Cheng Seng is very shy about talking to others, he wrote this letter to express himself to Dongfeng. The letter states that he volunteers to be Dongfeng's minion because Dongfeng is the first to cry for him. However, Dongfeng says that he doesn't need a minion from heaven. Suddenly they see a shop containing a treasure. They go to the shop and see a magic flower. Dongfeng wants to buy it, but the boss doesn't sell it. Cheng Sang immediately threatens him, surprising Dongfeng. Dongfeng begins to feel that Cheng Sang is very suitable to be a member of the demon race. After getting the magic flower, they quickly left, and Dongfeng left another treasure to exchange with the boss. It is black crystal and very valuable in the market. Dongfeng then takes Cheng Sang to Mount Hua, where Cheng Sang's mother is being held by the gods. Before the battle begins, Dongfeng orders the Dark Flame to do some things in the underworld. Cheng Sang's mother is being guarded by the seven saints and god Yang Giant who has the second highest strength in the heaven world. Cheng Seng doesn't hesitate to fight the saints of heaven for his mother. Dongfeng also teams up with him to destroy the saints. Facing the overwhelming power of the demon lord and god Cheng Seng, four of the seven saints are quickly defeated. Dongfeng says he will confront that big monkey and leave the two saints to Cheng Seng. However, Cheng Seng is immediately killed. It turns out that god Yang Jian disguises himself as one of the seven saints to fool Dongfeng. The four saints are not dead yet, the ones Dongfang and Cheng Sang killed are just stones that Yang Jian created. Dongfang is extremely angry that he is fooled and even angrier, when he saw his minion being killed. Dongfang immediately summons two demonic beasts to attack Yang Jian, but it looks like he is planning an escape since he is opening a gate while chanting. He immediately goes to the underworld to change the life and death book. If he can change it immediately, Cheng Sang might be saved. However, General Ju Yuan appears and stops him. He says that Cheng Seng was dead and that no one is allowed to change the laws of the world. But Ju Yuan feels that the kindness of Dongfeng resembled that of a god in the past. Ju Yuan summons three saints and begins activating the Yellow River Formation, a type of formation that specializes in trapping powerful demons like Dongfeng. Dongfeng is not easily defeated. He summons the strongest ancient armor in the northern wastelands, Hengong Fish. Hua Lin is upset because Dongfeng is choosing to defend himself while there is not much time to save Cheng Sang. Dongfeng says that Cheng Sang is completely dead, but he is using defense because he has another way to save Cheng Sang. He tells Hua Lin to use all her powers to keep Hengong Fish's seal to buy time. Dongfeng uses the forbidden magic field to gather the power of the three worlds. This forbidden technique can plunge all three worlds into chaos. Furthermore, once he succeeds, it will definitely backfire on the primordial spirit of the caster. Ju Yuan can't believe that Dongfeng can risk his life for someone. Dongfeng's drastic actions remind Ju Yuan of the great god Jai Dian. Jai Dian once sacrificed himself to save a demon. He once said that god is always on the side of the good. Ju Yuan cancelled the Yellow River formation and says that he wants to see the result that God really will side on a demon. Then Ju Yuan leaves. Taking this opportunity, Dong Feng and Hua Lin quickly summons the power of the three worlds to be able to revive Cheng Seng. However, the power of heaven cannot be gathered because someone prevented it. It turns out that God is Tai Meng, who is Hua Lin's master. The power of the three worlds that Dong Feng has tried to gather is also gone. There is no way to save Cheng Seng. At worst, the Dark Flame comes and says that he has completed the task Dongfeng gave him. Dongfeng asks him what the task is, and he says that he has corrected Cheng Sang's life in the Book of Life and Death. It turns out that before the battle at Mount Hua happened, Dongfeng sent Dark Flame to the Underworld to observe the Life and Death Book. If someone dies in Mount Hua, he must revive them immediately. Dongfeng forgot about this plan, and he had a pointless battle that risked his life. Since he used too much magic power, he needs to rest a bit and open the gate to the human world. God Tai Meng already knew that Cheng Sang was still alive, so she interrupted Dong Feng's spell to prevent it from harming the caster. Meanwhile, Dong Feng has arrived in the human world and is currently on a battlefield. This citadel is about to fall. Dong Feng's purpose here is to find a dying girl and let Hua Lin enter her body. Meanwhile, Zhu Yuan is being punished for letting Dong Feng go. 
the demon army also came to look into the matter and also wanted to know where Dongfeng was. The human race also attended this meeting. The human race is now represented by the ancestor of God, Yang Jian, because Yang Jian was originally a human, became a god later, and is currently being kept at home. His grandfather came here to report that Yang Jian will not return to heaven for a while. The human world is now powerful enough to be able to talk on equal terms with the other two worlds. They were discussing some real enemies of the three realms that were about to appear. They then came to an agreement to temporarily not touch Dongfeng until the real enemy appeared. Dongfeng and Hua Lin both went into the citadel to find a person named Xi Wang King, who would be the new body for Hua Lin. Dongfeng found the target and knew that this girl's life only had a few hours left. Xi Wang King is a general who is protecting this city and has a mute husband. Then Xi Wang King said goodbye to her husband because she knew the enemy would attack in full force tonight. She had almost no chance of survival. She left with tears falling, making Hua Lin feel sad. But Dongfeng forbade her to cry in his face. Hua Lin wants Dongfeng to help the couple. Meanwhile, General Shang Kui and Tactician did not know where Dongfeng had gone. Tactician casts a spell and takes out something, which will make Dongfeng obey his command. Meanwhile, Dongfeng ordered the evil spirit to control the sand, creating a sandstorm that swept away the enemy soldiers elsewhere. In the heavenly world, a heavenly general named Mozai sensed Dongfeng's magic power, so he sent a subordinate named Legong to the human world to kill Dongfeng. Then Xi Wangqing returned and met his lover again, and was happy that they were able to defend this citadel. They could have been together forever. Suddenly, Xi Wangqing was secretly stabbed by her lover and was about to die. Hua Lin understood why her lifespan was so short. Dongfeng told Hua Lin to enter the body when Xi Wangqing's soul had just left. Hua Lin quickly entered Xi Wangqing's body. Xi Wangqing's lover also planned to commit suicide to be with Xi Wangqing. But Hua Lin and Xi Wangqing's body cursed this guy for his treachery. At this moment, Lei Gong summoned lightning to strike Dongfeng, but was prevented by his barrier. Dongfeng did not have enough magical power to maintain the barrier, so he summoned Hoa Lei to help him buy time. Hoa Lei immediately rushed into the sky to stop Lei Gong. Lei Gong saw that Hoa Lei was also a lightning player, so he wanted to invite him to work together in the heavenly world. But Hoa Lei refused. Hoa Lei is just a small demon, of course, no match for a general of heaven. Suddenly someone appeared, and he introduced himself as Lai Xuanba from the human world. He came here to prevent Lei Gong from touching Dongfeng, according to the agreement of the three worlds. Dongfeng then called Hoa Lei back and told him to heal his wounds in the underworld. He then took Hua Lin away and found himself fulfilling his promise to her. Hua Lin seems to really like this new body. He took her to a flower field, and this is where they would both say goodbye to each other. Hua Lin was very grateful for the journey with Dongfeng. The two did a lot of things together, from escaping prison to causing chaos in the underworld to going shopping together and fighting Yang Jian together. In the end, they repelled Zhu Yuan and saved Cheng Sang. She advised Dongfeng to limit his karma because he was the first person to enter her life and left many unforgettable marks for her. She then turned away and wished Dongfeng well. Meanwhile, the two young men played with lightning for a while and forgot the reason they were fighting. But they cannot stop this fun. The next morning, the head of the human world faction came to see God, Yang Jian. He needed some information from God Yang Jian, while God Yang Jian wondered who this guy was. This guy introduced himself as someone who could travel through time and see many things. Before becoming a god, he was the king of a dynasty. People called him Wang Meng. He is investigating something called the Shadow Three Realms. God Yang Jian has shared little information, and it is still unknown what consequences the Shadow Three Realms will actually have. According to Wang Meng, he only saw the image of a dark cave that would swallow up the three worlds. After many times through time, the image is still the same. Suddenly, Lai Xuanba was brought here and seriously injured. He said that while he was punching with Lei Gong, he was attacked by a black shadow. A god came here to invite Wang Meng to the meeting of the three worlds again. Meanwhile, Hua Lin encounters a demon pig. This pig saw that she had the smell of a dead person but was still alive, so he wanted her to become his wife, causing her to panic. Suddenly, Dongfeng appeared, and she asked him to take care of that pig. Even though Dongfeng was lacking magic power, he could still easily defeat that pig with a hand-to-hand -hand punch. The pig shot strange soil at him. Dongfeng realized that this was a very precious type of soil, so he asked the pig to tell him where it came from. The pig said he got it from Kyanian Mountain. Dongfeng absorbed some of the pig's magic power and released him. Hoa Lei is happy that he is still following her, but Dongfeng says that he is just passing by. 
Then he immediately opened a gate to go privately. Hua Lin discovers that her body is rotting, even though her soul is inside. She thought she was tricked by Dongfeng, so she decided to go find him to question him. She remembered that Dongfeng seemed interested in Kyanian Mountain, so she told the demon pig to take her there. While her body was about to completely rot, the pig's owner suddenly came. This guy claimed to be the owner of Kyanian Mountain and knew she was an orchid fairy, so he decided to help her find Dongfeng. He told her to get into a jar to go to Kyanian Mountain, then change to another body. She thought he seemed like a good person, so she accepted to follow him. After three days floating at sea, Hua Lin was finally led by this man to his Kyanian Mountain. In remote antiquity, the world was chaotic. There were millions of strange creatures hidden in the dark and formed harmony. God Pangu used an axe to separate the sky and the earth. Since then, there was day and night in the three realms. There was light and shadow. Those creatures that originally existed in chaos will die in light. So they had to hide in the shadows and waited for the chance to come back. After that, in order to fight for the three realms, the war between light and shadow has never stopped. Until the Queen Mother of the West came and made the seal. All strange creatures were sealed outside the three realms and never allowed to enter the world. After that, those strange creatures formed and established new realms. Outside the three realms, that is the shadow three realms we are talking about. Wang Meng now asked about the shadow creature that Heaven captured during Legong's battle yesterday. But the creature dissipated as soon as it touched the light, so only the finger remained. Wang Meng realized what kind of soil was on his hand. It must be this soil that helps the shadow three realms survive before light. Wang Meng knew that this soil was most abundant in Kyanian Mountain. Meanwhile, Hua Lin was given a body similar to her original one. Lord Kyanian said this body was made of clay, but the clay was mixed with a special soil called Zai. Zai soil has the ability to contain souls, but it can only be used for three days. She also cannot touch the water. She didn't know why he helped her so much. He took her for a walk and said he had a hobby of collecting treasures, so she was also considered a rare treasure. Suddenly, there was news that a group of people were exploring outside the mountain. He told his subordinates to continue observing them. He told her that on this island there were many traps set by him because, in the past, there had been a few people who came to steal treasures. He considers the treasure as precious as his life. Surprisingly, Hua Lin knew everything about every treasure he had. So he knew she was also extremely valuable, so he took her with him. A dark shadow appeared and seemed concerned about her, but he ignored it all. He then leads her to a locked vault secured by his voice. He let her into the secret room, where he hid most of his treasures. He has traveled everywhere and intuitively buys any valuable items. He wanted Hua Lin to help him appraise these items. He saw that she could even identify all the objects here, so he ran to another place to get more treasures. She saw a strange orb, and she didn't know what it was. Suddenly, a text appeared on the wall telling her to lower her head. As soon as she bowed her head, the bottom collapsed, causing her to fall to another place. Luckily, she used her legs to support herself before the collision. She dropped the orb, and it rolled to a man's feet. She was surprised because the person in front of her was Dongfeng. Lord Kyanian was hearing complaints about him leaving Hua Lin in the treasure room alone. But Lord Kyanian believes that leaving a treasure like Hua Lin with other treasures is nothing to worry about. It turns out that Lord Kyanian is a member of the Shadow Three Realms, and their goal is to find a person capable of being a bridge leading the Shadow Creatures to the Three Realms. The group of people exploring outside is Yang Jian's group. They came to investigate the island but there were no residents here. But a person who emerged from the water told God Yang Jian that the island was covered with a barrier to hide it. And maybe Yang Jian's third eye is the only thing that can break the barrier. Wang Meng said that those capable of passing through the barrier of Kyanian Island must be people born from the core of the earth. They remembered a man born from stone. That person is none other than Ju Yuan. Ju Yuan already knew about the Shadow Three Realms, so there was no one more suitable for this case than him. Meanwhile, Hua Lin continuously scolded Dongfeng because he refused to keep his promise to her and give praise to Lord Kyanian. She blamed Dongfeng for not keeping his promise to her. He said that he promised to help her find a body, but did not promise that it would be perfect. At this moment, they stepped into the traps that Lord Kyanian had set. The first trap is fire, next is water. Dongfeng had to lift her up to avoid it. Immediately after that, both were put into a formation. The two are transported to the time of the battle between Dongfeng and the God of War. To destroy this formation, Dongfeng needs to go into that battle. Dongfeng remembers the moment when he was fighting the god of war and someone sneakily attacked him, causing him to get hit by the god of war's attack and be defeated. His body immediately fell into an illusion, causing Hua Lin to scream and even bite his neck to wake him up. 
while feeling angry about his past failure. He heard a loud scream, so he had to return to his body. They also quickly escaped the formation. At this moment, the two fell, and Dong Feng had to hug her to help her land. When she opened her eyes, she saw Lord Kyanian again. But Dong Feng asked her to leave him immediately. Lord Kyanian realized this was the person Hua Lin was looking for. Lord Kyanian wondered why a demon king like Dong Feng came to this place. Dong Feng replied that he came here to find Zai Soil to create a new body for Hua Lin. Hua Lin blushed because she saw Dong Feng care so much for her. But Lord Kyanian gave Dong Feng the sad news that Zai Soil only helped Hua Lin survive for three days. But that is the case of adding clay. While Dong Feng is talking about the case of a body made only of Zai Soil, Lord Kyanian did not agree because this island's rare soil could not be given to people so easily. So Dong Feng took out the precious black gem, surprising Lord Kyanian. But luckily, the shadow calmed him down. Dongfeng said that if one black gem wasn't enough, he could give him a few more. Lord Kyanian finally couldn't resist. He then took them to a room to rest, and then he went to get Zai Soil. It turns out, Lord Kyanian wanted to let Dongfeng try a way to create a complete body using Zai Soil. If successful, Lord Kyanian can create bodies for the Shadow Three Realms, and they will no longer be afraid of light. Dongfeng knew from the beginning that Lord Kyanian's true identity was a shadow. Lord Kyanian's clay body was also about to break and there wasn't a replacement yet because he had used that body for Hua Lin. Dongfeng told Hua Lin to stay here until Lord Kyanian brought Zai Soil. He will be out for a while. A moment later, Lord Kyanian brought Zai Soil over and was given a bag of black gems by Hua Lin. Hua Lin was suspicious about Dongfeng's words about Lord Kyanian, so she pressed her questions when Lord Kyanian made an excuse to leave. But Hua Lin saw a crack on Lord Kyanian's face, so as soon as Dongfeng returned, she told Dongfeng about it. Dongfeng then began using magic to create a new body. So Hua Lin went outside to not bother him. But unexpectedly, Dongfeng wanted to use this pile of X soil to make a new body for the god of war. Hua Lin saw that something was wrong, so she went inside and realized that Dongfeng continued to try to trick her. Up until now, the reason Dongfeng kept Zai Wang King's soul was to have a chance to revive her and take revenge. Hua Lin cried because she believed that Dongfeng was making a body for her. She angrily entered the body in front of her, causing Dongfeng's plan to fail. She then had a completely new body. Lord Kyanian saw that she had successfully had a perfect body, so he immediately ordered the shadow to attack Dongfeng and exploit how to make a body with Zai soil. Dongfeng told Hua Lin that Lord Kyanian was dangerous and advised her to run away. Hua Lin also knows that Lord Kyanian is a bad guy, but right now she would rather believe in Lord Kyanian than Dongfeng. Lord Kyanian also warmly led her away, no matter how much she scolded him. Meanwhile, outside, Zhu Yuan used magic to recreate the Queen Mother's spell that was used to seal the Shadow Three Realms. Lord Kyanian inside knew that the formation had been broken. Lord Kyanian knew that time was running out, so he had to let Hua Lin faint. Meanwhile, Zhu Yuan asked God Young Giant to mobilize heavenly soldiers here because they could not recklessly enter the territory of the Shadow Three Realms. Zhu Yuan ordered the generals of the Tactical Heaven to raid inside. Jin Desheng and Dai Lai will enter the island from the earthquake position, make thunder, and lock the miasma in the five directions. Yang Zion and Wu Long will enter the island from the departure position, ignite fire, and keep the four courts hidden. Elder Yang and Lord Zio belonged to the human world faction and did not want to follow Ju Yuan's orders, so they stormed the island on their own. The generals of heaven asked Ju Yuan to rest, they would buy time for him to recover his magic power. Because Ju Yuan had used up to 50% of his magic power to break the island's formation. Meanwhile, Lord Kyanian took Hua Lin to the gate where the Shadow Three Realms were sealed. Lord Kyanian did not expect Hua Lin to be able to resonate with the gate so much and even break a seal of the Queen Mother. He doesn't know who Hua Lin really is. At this time, Lord Kyanian knew that someone was on the island. He met several high level shadows. They said a seal was lost so the low level demons could spread out. Although they only lived for two hours, that was enough time for Lord Kyanian to break the remaining two seals. At this time, Lord Zio and Elder Yang entered the island but saw no creatures. Lord Zio was suddenly pierced in the neck by a shadow, so he turned to fight back. Luckily he has infinite regeneration ability, but it continued to sneak attack him and call many accomplices. He told Elder Yang to use a wide area attack to destroy them and just save him one arm, and that Lord Zio only needed one hand to recover. But other shadows kept coming, so Lord Zio used a spell to speed up the growth of creatures because all creatures will die over time. Yang Zion and Wu Long have now placed light spells on the island. Each pillar of light will descend, and soon it will reach the entire island. 
Lord Kyanian feels guilty that he is doing bad things to Hua Lin. The Shadow wanted Lord Kyanian to drain Hua Lin's life force to break the spell quickly. But Lord Kyanian did not want to do that because it would endanger Hua Lin's life. But constantly under pressure from his superiors, Lord Kyanian had to withdraw some of Hua Lin's vitality and successfully break the second seal. Jin Desheng and Dai Lai came here. Meanwhile, Dong Feng's memories are being penetrated by this shadow. He transformed into human form and checked inside. He was surprised because it contained a lot of knowledge about ancient magic, while he thought Dong Feng didn't even have magic power. Then when he saw a cage with many sealing spells on it, he took the risk and entered. He realized that all of Dong Feng's magic power was here. Dong Feng's magic decided to teach this guy a lesson. Dong Feng forced this guy to kneel and then beat him. He wants Dong Feng to spare him because he can show him how to defeat the Shadow Three Realms, but he doesn't need to because he is not a hero. He used a way to escape the barrier to negotiate, but Dong Feng thought he could find a way himself. But he thought that if he delayed, Hua Lin would die. Seeing that Dong Feng seemed interested in Hua Lin, he immediately changed his attitude. The Shadow Leader called out his three generals to fight the people of heaven. This girl is General Feng, this bird is General Kue, and this guy is General Shi. Dai Lai summoned an earth dragon to attack them, but it had no effect. The three generals decided to split into three directions to fight the soldiers of heaven. General Feng will stay here to confront Dai Lai and Jin Desheng. General Kue rushed to the top of the mountain and killed Yang Zion in the blink of an eye. General Shi went to Elder Yang and Lord Zion and defeated them. Dai Lai was poisoned by General Feng's shadow. He knew he was going to die, so he used the last bit of his strength to push Jin Desheng out of the dangerous area. Meanwhile, General Kui killed Wu Long and sensed that there was someone very strong above. He flew up into the sky and saw Ju Yuan recovering his magic power. Elder Yang and Lord Zio were no match for General Shi. Elder Yang cannot unleash his full power because it will also kill Lord Zio. But without Lord Zio constantly restoring Elder Yang's strength, Elder Yang would not be able to withstand this guy's power. Elder Yang told him to go to Ju Yuan to heal him while he would try his best to hold off General Shi. He believed he could last an hour, but General Shi thought Elder Yang was overestimating himself. Of course, what he said just now was a lie, but he would still risk his life. Lord Zio was flying towards Ju Yuan when he collided with Jin Desheng. Lord Zio and Jin Desheng sensed the magic power inside the house, where Dong Feng was being oppressed by the shadow. Ju Yuan now saw that General Kue was waiting for him to recover his magic power because he did not want to fight Ju Yuan, who only had half his magic power. General Kue said that he had killed Yang Zion and Wu Long, causing Ju Yuan, who had never been angry before, to be unable to hold back his indignation and create an endless barrier to trap him. He tried to run, but couldn't escape. Here, Ju Yuan tied him up and let lightning strike him endlessly. General Kue will forever suffer in this barrier. Lord Zio and Jin Desheng walked inside the room and saw Dong Feng. Lord Zio decides to restore Dong Feng's magic power, thinking that they now have the same enemy. Dong Feng was now resigned to letting the shadow fight back, as long as he released him. But Dong Feng noticed that his magic power was recovering, so he decided he didn't need this guy anymore and freed himself from this barrier. He then escaped and asked who had restored him. He knew that Lord Zio had the ability to restore people's magic powers, so he took them both with him to follow the shadow. The shadow panicked and ran to General Shi's place, but Ju Yuan finished dealing with him and saved Elder Yang. Lord Zio came to help him. Dong Feng and Ju Yuan interrogated the shadow about the location of Hua Lin and the gate of the Shadow Three Realms. The shadow did not answer because he knew that if he said anything, he would be killed. But Jin Desheng knew the location of the gate, so they no longer needed to keep the shadow alive. Dong Feng told Ju Yuan that this island would disappear as soon as it touched water, so he would go save Hua Lin and take care of all the shadows on this island while Ju Yuan cast a spell to pull rain. He will take Lord Zio and Jin Desheng with him, while Elder Yang will go with Ju Yuan. Meanwhile, Lord Kyanian was about to open the third seal when Dong Feng came and stopped the three men in the gate. Dong Feng wants them to go back to their place and tell their queen that he will soon find them and send them to hell. He then blows up the gate. Seeing this, General Feng tried to run away. Dong Feng called Lord Zio to treat Hua Lin. He saw that Hua Lin's life had been drained and that if they were even a little late she would die. He was angry with Lord Kyanian and decided to let Lord Kyanian experience the most cruel way to die in the three worlds. Ju Yuan now knew that he only had enough magic power to call the sun, so he had to rely on Elder Young to create rain. General Shang Kue and Tactician also came here to observe the situation. General Kue was running away when she was suddenly hit by Dong Feng's spell, but was not harmed. 
Dongfeng actually only locked her power so that Jin Desheng could avenge the Dai Lai. But he didn't kill her because he knew she had a way to return to the Shadow Three Realms. He wants her to take him there. Lord Kyanian knew he couldn't defeat Dongfeng, but he still had to fight and couldn't run away. When he saw Dongfeng launch an attack, he could only launch a defensive spell, but the power was so great that Lord Kyanian was blown away. Dongfeng saw that Hua Lin had woken up and was a bit surprised. Lord Kyanian was blown away and found himself with only one way left. Dongfeng tried to explain it to Hua Lin, but she refused to believe it. Suddenly, all the shadows were pulled to one side. They were absorbed by Lord Kyanian, who then flew to Dongfeng and created eight more copies of Hua Lin. Lord Kyanian teleported eight Hua Lin across the island. Dongfeng only has one chance to save her before he kills her. Dongfeng somehow teleported to the real Hua Lin and saved her. He said he only felt where she was, making her know Dongfeng had never abandoned her. The sun was also up, so he knew Ju Yuan was done. Ju Yuan had to use all his magic power to call up the sun, and Elder Yang pushed sea water into the sky to create rain. General Shang Kui and the tactician saw this as a rare opportunity to eliminate Ju Yuan. Lord Kyanian came to see Hua Lin one last time. He said that because of the dignity of his clan, he injured her and he did not ask her for forgiveness. She really still couldn't forgive Lord Kyanian, but because he had helped her so much, she would keep the memory of Lord Kyanian in her heart. Lord Kyanian then died peacefully. Meanwhile, Tactician quickly rushed to destroy Zhu Yuan and informed Wang Meng to take action. Wang Meng was talking to a god and took him through time to somewhere. 